Welcome back to Anton Math. Now in the last couple of videos we've been talking about conditional statements and I've alluded to something that we're going to focus on now in this video and that's called a biconditional statement. And it's fairly intuitive in nature and we'll define it a couple of different ways. So first, given that P and Q are propositions, the biconditional sentence P and then this little symbol, it's like, a, it's like the implication symbol but I have an arrow going in both directions. This is read P if and only if Q or we sometimes shorthand if and only if to be IFF. So you see I've used that before and I'll use it again. IFF means if and only if and that's the English equivalent to this symbol here, this biconditional symbol. And this is true when both P and Q have the same truth values. So that can be one of two things, either P and Q are both true or P and Q are both false. Okay, so just like with the some of these other videos, we're gonna go ahead and make a truth table and we're gonna try to figure out you know a little bit more about this biconditional statement. So if I have these two propositions, some propositions P and Q, I want to look at P implies Q, I want to look at Q implies P, and I want to look at this biconditional statement. Okay. So again, setting up my truth values for my for my simple propositions, right? We want to look at all the combinations that P and Q can be, right? So there's my four combinations. P implies Q. We know that that is true when Q is true, or when P is false, and it's false in the only other case where P is true and Q is false. Q implies P means that Q is false or P is true, right? So we have true, false, true, true. And then P by conditional with Q, that's going to be when P and Q are both true or when they're both false. So we see we have true, false, false, true, right? This row two and three, P and Q are different from each other. So the by conditional statement is false. It's going to be true if they're both true or they're both false. Now we can see the reason I've set up the truth table here is that I've used this definition up here to say that they're biconditionally related if they're true and false together. Either they're both true or they're both false, right? But that's going to be the same thing as if we look at this down here as the biconditional statement. So let's, let's look at this. P biconditional with Q. This is equivalent, or in other words, it has the same truth table as P implies Q and Q implies P. So in other words, if we have a conditional statement with a true converse, that's also a biconditional relationship, right? And we can see that here, if instead over here I had Yes, I could write that over here. Uh, P implies Q by conditional Q implies P. We see that these are true at the same time that P and Q are either both true or both false, and they're mixed at the same time that P and Q are mixed, right? So there's two ways to think about it. This by conditional statement between P and Q means P and Q are both true or P and Q are both false. And another way to look at it is that you can kind of read this arrow in both directions, right? P implies Q and Q implies P at the same time, right? Those are both equivalent definitions. Now P and Q are said to be equivalent statements if P implies Q is a tautology, right? So if P implies Q is a tautology, or in other words, if this is always a true statement, then P and Q are equivalent. Equivalent, right? In other words, um, saying P is the same thing as saying Q, right? Um, I have some examples. So let's go ahead and I'm going to get a new board and this first example is going to be this case here. If this is a tautology, if it's always true, then P and Pi is Q are equivalent. I'm going to go ahead and give you a set of equivalent statements, right? So I have this first statement, a rectangle is a square, 
and I claim that's if and only if the rectangle's diagonals are perpendicular, and that's if and only if the rectangle sides are equal in length. Now, these are always true or false together. This is these on a truth table, these statements are in tautology with this biconditional statement, right? So we can call these statements equivalent. These are all equivalent definitions of a square based on what we know about a rectangle, right? If we have a rectangle, well, first one's just saying it's a square. If we have a rectangle and the diagonals are perpendicular to each other, well, that only happens in the special case where that rectangle is a square. And if we have a rectangle where the sides are all equal in length, again, that only happens in, or, or, I mean, <laughs> that is the special case of rectangle, which we call a square. So these are all equivalent statements. If I called these P, Q, R with these biconditional statements, P, Q, and R would be uh, equivalent statements, right? And that's what biconditional often means. We'll often read biconditional as, instead of if and only if, we'll sometimes read is equivalent to. And that's perfectly fine to use that. If P and Q have that biconditional um, association with each other, it means that they are going to be equivalent statements. Let me give another little kind of an example. Let's say I have x equals 3 and I have x cubed equals 9x. And I want to know what can go in here, right? Is this conditional or is it biconditional? Well, first, conditional should be pretty clear, right? If x equals 3, x cubed is 27 and 9 times x is also 27, right? So this conditional here is true. Now I want to know, is the other way true, right? And this is how we'll generally prove that something has a biconditional relationship. This is going to be an if and only if statement if from left to right is a conditional statement and from right to left is also a conditional statement. So this is just a very basic proof. We haven't really gotten to methods of proof, but just to give you an idea of what's coming. So I want to know, is this left as well? Does x cubed equal 9x imply that x is 3? And the answer is no. x equals negative 3 also satisfies this right-hand side, doesn't it? So x cubed equals 9x could imply, I mean, it doesn't because x could be 3, but it could imply also that x equals negative 3, right? So this statement does not go both ways. This is only a conditional statement, OK? And that's all I have for you for this video. Now, after this, we're going to talk about quantifiers a little bit. Um, go a little bit more in depth uh, than we did in, in the very basic uh, preliminary section videos. Uh, and then we're going to start getting into methods of proof. And we'll see you in the next upcoming videos.